16, their attitude will be, they'll be extremely humble to the believers. So before we talk about giving our opinion, we have to understand what it means to be humble to other believers. Dhalil, dhulala in Arabic actually is what you walk all, all over, like a rug. Like a rug. So we have to let other believers walk all over us. In other words, we have to be extremely humble in our, in our interaction with other believers. But then Allah Azza wa adds the idea of giving opinion. He says, يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَةَ لَائِمٍ They struggle for the sake of Allah. And they don't fear the blame of anyone who casts blame. Please listen carefully. They don't fear the, the blame of anyone who blames them. The criticism of anyone who criticizes them. They're not afraid of the critic when they voice their opinion. They don't look around and say, what are people going to say if I say this? It's in my conscience. I can't sit on it. I feel like it's wrong what's going on. I should say something, but man, everybody around me is going to think I'm weird. Or I'm a troublemaker. Or I'm causing problems. So I should just stay quiet. No. You shouldn't just stay quiet. This peer pressure thing, this is against the peer pressure in an organization. Because organizations tend to develop momentum. They start ho going in a direction and they go full steam ahead. And maybe it's not the best direction. And you and your good conscience realize there's something wrong with this direction. And you don't voice your opinion because everybody's too excited about continuing to go. And the train's already left the station, sort of, you know? You should and you have to voice your opinion no matter what other people say. You have to be courageous about voicing your opinion. But you don't have to be a punk about it either. You don't have to make trouble at a meeting and say, I have to, I do not fear La Akhafu Fillahi Laumatala Imin. What we are doing is hypocrisy and blah, blah. no no no. There's respectful ways of saying your opinion. There's a decent way of saying, look, I'm not too comfortable with this. I don't mean to be trouble. I don't want to be offensive, but how do we justify this behavior? How do how can we do this, this and this? This doesn't seem right to me. You know? And so at the very least you voice your concern. The other thing also is not just about something that's happening that's wrong, but you have a suggestion for improvement. You have a suggestion for betterment. You have a strategic suggestion. You should never be afraid of giving those kinds of suggestions. But here's the thing that will save you or destroy you. If you don't remember it, it'll destroy you. And that is giving a sincere suggestion for the sake of Allah is an act of worship. Giving a suggestion is just like giving sadaqah. There's no difference between giving a suggestion, a sincere piece of advice, and sadaqah. Sadaqah is only for Allah. Advice is only for Allah. If you expect returns in dunya from sadaqah, then Allah does not count your sadaqah. If you expect that your opinion should be taken, that they should act on your opinion, and if they don't act on your opinion, you'll get offended, then you did not give that opinion for the sake of Allah, you gave that opinion for the sake of getting it followed. Then you gave that opinion for yourself, for your furthering, not for Allah. Giving your opinion is the act of worship. The ultimate teaching of that is Salat itself. In the Salat, I forget that Dhuhr is four rakat, or I lost my mind, Salah Shaitan got to me, I got up for a fifth rakat. You're standing behind me. What do you do? You give your opinion, this is wrong. How do you give your opinion? Subhanallah. But I keep standing and make the full fifth rakah. What do you do? This is not Islam. I'm going to just sit down and make my salams now. Or will you follow along? You will follow along because the discipline of the group is more important than you individually being right. Your responsibility was completed the moment you voiced your concern. If you courageously voiced your concern, now the onus, the responsibility for things going wrong is not on you, it's on the leadership. You did your part. You cannot, you just make dua, not just for you, Ya Allah, I've, I'm give, I've given this opinion, accept it as an act of worship to you. And by the way, if we truly have our intentions right, then we should be terribly afraid if our opinion is taken. Not offended when our opinion is not taken. 
Because if our opinion is taken, then the entire responsibility has fallen on us. It went from the leadership took my opinion. If something goes wrong, I will be asked about it. Because that was my suggestion. So think a hundred times before you give a suggestion. Give a sincere suggestion. Ask Allah for guidance when you do make a suggestion. And then don't be offended if it's not taken. It's not the end of the world. It's not like kufr and iman. Like your, your opinion was iman and everything else is kufr. It's not like that. That your opinion is guidance, everything else is misguidance. It's not like that. It's not the end of the world. So give your opinion, don't be afraid, but don't be hung up on your opinion either. Don't say they don't listen to me. That's actually the quote from Allah of the munafiqun. Halana min al amri min shay. Do we have any authority either? People never they never listen to us. Nobody takes what we say seriously. That's what they said. That's what they complained. Because they were offended that their opinion was not taken at Uhud. They were offended by that. Right? So we shouldn't be that attitude. That's the first <laughs> important caveat. And then the next thing, And whenever they get angry, they calm themselves down. They control themselves. What is the most difficult urge to control for young people? It's their tendency, their, their, their attraction to the opposite gender. If you can control that, then the other next thing that's a big problem for you is what? For young people? Tempers. Somebody says something you don't like. Tempers flare immediately. Allah mentions if you can control al-fawahish then you'll be able to not only control your anger you'll be able to forgive and that's a key to Islamic successful Islamic work you have to work with others that will raise your blood pressure sorry that comes with the territory you're not alone in that I don't care if you're working at a masjid you're helping out at a school doesn't matter what voluntary work you're doing you will be around people that will get on your nerves and I'm telling you they will crawl under your skin and it will boil and you will feel like you want to say something so badly and, and, and when that urge comes you just recite وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُوهُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ whenever they get mad they forgive and, and, and when that urge comes you just recite وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُوهُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ whenever they get mad they forgive it's not even whenever they get mad, they calm down. They forgive, they let it go, they cover it up, they move on. They learn to grow a thick skin. People that are going to work for Islam, if you don't have a thick skin, better grow one. Because that's what Allah wants. You better be mentally prepared to be offended a lot. A lot. And keep chugging along anyway. That's what comes with the territory. It has to be there. You know how many people join an organization with good intention and they're given hugs and congratulations and six months later when they hear something they didn't want to hear or somebody upset them, they quit. And they quit and they say, I'm never going back there again. You say, why won't you go back there again? You don't know what they said to me. You know what that one guy said to me. What he said to you was your test of whether or not you get angry or not. Because Allah's work is more important than your temper, than your pride. If you were doing work there, you go back and you do it. And you t I'm not saying you let people walk all over you. You don't do that either. You stand up for yourself. But you don't insult anybody. And you overlook their misgivings. And you know sometimes there are people, in, mostly Pakistanis, us, we're good at this. We, we love to say things that burn. It's just in our culture. We just have to do it. We can't help ourselves. We just have to, we have to do it with our children. We have to do it with our wife. You know, if she made a good meal, you have to say, Aaj to bada khana bada hai. Aaj kya bukhar tha? <laughs> Today is a good meal. Are you feeling okay? Because usually it's pathetic. You can't just say it's nice. You can't do it. You have to, mm. And you bring that into the meeting. You bring that into the Islamic work too. You just have to say these little, little things. And these little things, they add up until a person goes crazy. They keep building up, farat the nur, the kettle over, over boils. But you, on the receiving end, just learn to grow a thick skin and take it and learn to laugh it off. Learn to laugh it off. Learn to hear obscene, offensive things and just laugh them off and let them go. That's the way you'll be able to continue to do your work. And those people, 
I tell you, those people are a blessing. Those people that test your patience, they're a blessing. Because they're a way, they are the way by which Allah teaches you sabr. If they weren't there, you'd never learn sabr. So at the, at the ceremony at the end of the year, you say, I thank those who helped me and I thank those who made me a more patient human being. <laughs> right? Because they're a means by which you're elevating, really. This, this, is, this is also a part of your risk. The people that are going to be a challenge in your life. Because otherwise sabr is just a theory. What is sabr if it's not tested? What is patience if it's not tested? And sometimes it's tested by those who are close to us, those we, are, we have to make dua for them okay. as you're leaving. May Allah bless this effort. May Allah Azza wa Jal unite us. May Allah Azza wa Jal make, you know, uh, make whatever decisions we take full of barakah and forgive all the shortcomings we have. Myself and all of you. I make dua for you, you make dua for me. Leave on a good note. Don't leave on like a wrestling match at most board meetings. Don't do that. Don't walk away angry. These are your brothers. You want to see them in Jannah. You're all here for the same reason. Nobody's getting a paycheck. Everybody's a volunteer. If there's anger in the meeting, it's because shaitan is there. That's your enemy, not, not each other. Realize that. Don't be fooled by him. Don't be fooled by him. We should know better. Really. I'll take two more minutes. Tell my slaves, say the best possible, better thing. Say the better thing. Allah didn't even say say the best thing because we're not capable of saying the best thing. He said ahsan, tafdeel, not al ahsan. Say the better thing. In your head, you could have said something, then you think in your head, maybe there's a better way of saying that. Maybe I should wait, hold on, I should put the brakes on, let me find a less offensive way of voicing that again. And then say, in your head, before you open your mouth, there should be a multiple choice questionnaire. I'm about to say what he said is wrong. And I could say it this way, that guy's wrong. Two, I don't think I agree with that. Maybe I should go with, I don't think I agree with that. Instead of saying, that guy's wrong. You know? Think through what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. This is, يَقُولُ الَّتِهِ أَحْسَنُ And if you don't do that, Inna shaytana yanzaku baynakum Guaranteed, no doubt about it Shaytan will cause dissent among you No doubt about it If you don't watch what you're gonna say